We began zeroing in on a massive piece of equipment that could transform the way the military conducts its missions. Drones have made their way into the mainstream conversation as senators demand more transparency on the thus far secret drone campaign. As of now, we have drone bases in places like Pakistan and Djibouti, Africa. And as covert drone warfare becomes a critical foreign policy strategy, we can expect even more of these bases to pop up. But what if you didn't need to set up a base in these volatile countries? Well, that could be the case if drone aircraft carriers were put to use. You are looking at the Navy's X-47B drone aircraft, which is in the testing phase right now. The first takeoff at sea set to happen sometime this year. So how can this change the U.S.'s military strategy? To discuss, I'm joined by our uh, Michael Brooks in our New York studio. He is the producer of the Majority Report. Welcome, Michael. So how could this change the game as, as we know it? Well, this could change the game really significantly, Liz, and uh, it's great to be talking with you. Um, it would really reduce the need for uh, bases, for drone bases in the volatile areas that you mentioned. <clears throat> and the uh, co-author uh, of this article, uh, Eli Clifton and I, which we co-wrote for Alternet, were really interested in what the implications of reducing that sort of added barrier to drone deployments could look like. And the really big and most immediate takeaway is having to deal even less with uh, the desires and the objectives of foreign governments when we project these weapons overseas. So that is a really uh, very, very large potential step, which happens right off of the bat. So ultimately, are you saying that uh, this would mean that the U.S. wouldn't need to be as concerned about winning over the, the hearts and minds of those that we deal with overseas? Well, I mean, you know, we should always be concerned fundamentally with winning hearts and minds because obviously we're not going to be able to solve this problem in the long term without getting rid of the root causes of things that create the conditions for terrorism, poverty, injustice, inequality, lack of opportunity, you know, tough on terrorism, sure, but also tough on the causes of terrorism. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, uh, this program already is far from winning hearts and minds. You know, 74 percent of Pakistanis, uh, according to a recent Pew poll, identify the United States as an enemy. Fifty percent, only 50 percent of Pakistanis want humanitarian aid in areas that are uh, affected uh, by uh, militant fighters and terrorist groups and groups like the Taliban. That's down from uh, 72 percent in 2009. So already, even with uh, the drone deployments as they are, it's having a very uh, adverse impact on public opinion uh, in affected areas like Pakistan. Now, if these aircraft carriers are, or for drones are put to use, uh, what, what, would ha what would happen to these existing drone bases? Do you think that one day they're going to be obsolete? Uh, you know, that's definitely hard to predict. Um, you know, this technology is still in development. I think it's likely that there still will be, you know, probably some drone bases in operation. But by that same token, if you can reduce the need for these drone bases, like as an example, uh, ones in Afghanistan that we operate in Pakistan out of, kind of the, you know, opposite end of that war, uh, where we go into Pakistan from Afghanistan, actually, with, uh, with these drones, uh, you know, we might there might, and I think there will be a real reduction uh, of these bases, uh, and that will give us uh, more room to operate with even you know greater flexibility than we even already have now in this program, which is a lot. Uh, when can we expect these carriers to be put to full use? Uh, so there'll be more testing this year, and uh, the reports that uh, Eli and I, uh, my co-author and I, have heard are uh, 2019 uh, is a is a is a, the date for. Uh, deployment, but you know, obviously, it is an emerging technology, and we'll we'll see how it goes. Interesting, and it seems technology is always advancing. Um, that's not an no exception in the military. Um, I want to take a look at this uh, a lethal. If we can pull this this uh, graphic up, there it is. It's a lethal miniature aerial munition system called the Switchblade. Looks a lot like a drone. The U.S. Army is looking at requests from commanders in Afghanistan for more of these switchblades. So, Michael, could this be, could it be that drone technology? I mean, um, it's getting a lot bigger and a lot smaller at the same time. 
Well, you know, it's, sometimes it seems like there's like a goal to sort of uh, in the military and in the defense community to make sure as many, uh, you know, action scenes in like Iron Man or something come uh, to fruition and uh, become true in real life. But, uh, you know, I, I actually think the switchblade is, is more of a tactical weapon. It's deployed on a much smaller level. Um, it is similar technology as far as I understand, but I don't think it has the same type of real fundamental uh, strategic effects that the drone program has. Interesting. Always coming up, coming out with new things. Technology always advancing and appreciate you shining some light on what uh, could be the tools of the future. That was Michael Brooks, producer of the Majority Report. Thank you.